Welcome to the channel. My name is Mike and today we're going to be talking about walking in the woods. All right, so becoming a ghost in the woods, uh, that can actually be pretty difficult just by a simple concept. Um, it can take years of practice, careful planning, depending on your whatever you're going to do. Um, I've spent years of walking in the woods, both tactically and for leisure. Um, so any hunters that watch this video, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, that twig snapping or that leaf crackling, that could be just like, that could ruin your chance of that buck, you know, or if you're in a tactical situation, maybe even your life. So whether you're watching this for tactical or hunting knowledge, this is all going to be pretty much the same across the board. It's just going to be a different type of prey. So enough talk and let's just jump right into the basics. Number one, we're going to be using our most important feature, which is going to be our eyesight. So when we use our eyesight, we're going to be looking for our path of approach. All right. So depending on your terrain and your terrain features, whether that's mountain or flat ground here in Florida, we have a lot of flat. Uh, thick underbrush. We're going to be using our eyes to survey the land in front of us. So in the army we call this the path of least resistance. So obviously if you see a path that's nice and open, we're going to take that versus going through a heap of underbrush, you know. And you know, this is also going to depend on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to get to a certain spot, you that underbrush may be inevitable. Number two on the list, you're going to want to avoid loose foliage. So what I'm saying is sticks, dry leaves, stuff, stuff like that. Um, stepping on a stick and it cracking in the woods, you know, that can be heard quite a distance sometimes, depending on your surroundings. Again, um, just try to watch your footing. Definitely watch out for holes. Watch out for uh, thorns. Florida we have lots of thorns in the thick brush which you know you're walking through the night and that whacks you in the face it's a really big uh, it wakes you up we'll just put it that way all right so number three we're gonna talk about walking style I'm gonna talk about two different styles um, and they may not apply to you again it's gonna be dependent on your terrain you have to figure out what works best for you but um, a lot of what's taught is just walking heel to toe and not stomping. Um, so stomping, you would be just heel to toe. You're gonna actually go through that full motion from heel all the way to your toe. Um, the next one I'll talk about, uh, and this may be called different things for some people, but I call it catwalking. It's kind of like creeping. It's on your tippy toes, or you, you could call it tiptoeing, whatever you guys wanna call it. So like very thick, thick underbrush. A lot of times you'll get like little vines that go across. Tiptoeing allows you to not snag those in trip and fall, which, you know, if you're hunting, that's gonna alert your game. Um, if you're in a tactical situation, that can alert everything around you, other people, okay? And what we're trying to do here is not be detected in the woods. Number four, um, kind of a simple concept is so just take your time you know if you don't have a hit time that you need to meet and you're just walking in the woods hunting or whatever just take your time um, walk at a slow pace at first the more experience that you get walking around in the woods the faster you're going to be able to maneuver your way through underbrush um, vines whatever terrain you know and you're just not going to do that overnight you actually have to get out here you actually have to practice this stuff so you know you just got to do it and the next thing i want to talk about is just important um and that is going to be you as an individual so disciplined individuals are noise disciplined so the objective here is to stay as quiet as possible um this type of discipline is going to consist of your gear, um, your talking, breathing, and surprisingly, for some, um, your scent, how you smell. So your gear should be nice and tight. See how I have my um, 
straps tied off so they're not flopping around. Um, there shouldn't be anything hanging off. Your ruck should not be squeaking. If you have one of those plastic frame rucks, I'm sorry. I have the old school Alice pack because, you know, that's just the best. No, I'm just kidding. I'm sure there's other great stuff out there. Um, <clears throat> so if you're trying to avoid detection, talking is going to want to be kept to a minimum. If you are, you know, in a tactical situation, you're with more than one person, you have comms, you know, you still want to incorporate hand and arm singles and you guys want to be familiar with that. Um, you know, talking out loud, that's going to be secondary. Going over the scents and how we smell. Uh, one of the biggest things that we don't think about is our laundry detergent, what we're washing our uniforms with. Um, you know, the, the enemy or your prey, or excuse me, the enemy or, you know, the game that you're hunting, they could possibly smell you. Um, and a part of disciplining yourself is if you're a smoker, you best believe that that shit is there, someone's gonna smell that. That's gonna be your downfall right there. Cigarettes, uh, a deer can smell cigarette better than a human can. So don't do that. Uh, colognes, definitely don't do that. Um, th th these are all things that, you know, if you're in a tactical situation, that trackers, if you're trying to uh, evade, trackers are gonna pick up on this stuff. Um, and they're also gonna be able to tell kind of a lot of things about you and your discipline. Um, also, if let's say you have to make camp really quick or you have to take a rest, you're gonna eat, don't leave your trash behind. And that's not necessarily just because you don't wanna litter in, the, in, you know, in our environment. That's because uh, a lot can be told from trash, like, you know, how your food and water situation is, how disciplined you are, and how many personnel are traveling with you. And, you know, it could tell a lot more than just that. That's just right off the top of my head. You just got to get out here and, and just walk around. That's going to be the best training. Those four tips on, you know, just be, becoming undetectable, that it takes a long time practicing this stuff. You you really just have to go get your kit, get your gear on, call it LARPing, whatever the hell you want. Um, just do it. You just got to get out there. I'm fat. You know, I still ruck. I try to ruck two or three times a week. Go for a short hike with no gear at first. Then when you start to feel confident in your abilities, your footwork, um, you know, get you a ruck. Not, you know, you, you can get Alice packs for cheap still. I mean, versus what regular packs cost, like the nice ones you know, three, four hundred bucks. You can still get these for about 150. Um, and if you don't have that kind of cash, um, just get a backpack. Put some stuff in it, throw your lunch in there. If you wanna practice any of this stuff with buddies, which I recommend, um, have your buddies go out at a point in the woods. This will be a known point, okay? So the objective of this is to try to creep up to them without them being able to hear you. So you want to have like maybe some very thick brush to where they're not going to be able to see you or just have them face a different direction, but try to creep up and see if they can hear you. All right. So thanks for watching. Um, leave a comment, like, and subscribe for more upcoming videos. Also, if you guys want to, uh, have me do a specific video on a topic, just go ahead and leave it in the comments, okay?